Hey guys, um, I want to explain how the pig experiment allows us to estimate the mass of the Earth. And uh, let me do this in two steps. First of all, the main idea is that we're going to take Newton's laws of motion and the universal law of gravitation and combine those two guys with the observation of our pig moving in a circle to calculate the mass of the Earth. It's an amazing thing that you can even do it, but the basic idea is the net force acting on the pig is equal to the mass of the pig times his acceleration. Now the pig's going in a circle, so we know that the acceleration is v squared over r. So that's a, the reason that's true is a completely separate problem, which we can talk about. We already did talk about it, but I'm just going to remind you of the answer. The net force on the pig points toward the center of the circle, and it has a magnitude of mv squared over r. At the same time, the Earth is pulling down on the pig, and that's the gravitational force, which we'll get to here in a second. But the point is the gravitational force depends on the mass of the Earth, the mass of the pig, and the distance between the Earth and the pig. So the way that works is the magnitude of the gravitational force is Newton's universal constant of gravitation times the mass of the Earth, which I'm going to call big M, plus the mass of the pig, which I'll call little m, divided by the distance between the pig and the Earth squared, which I'll call little r squared. That's it. Now, these, two, these are the basic mathematical laws cooked up by Isaac Newton that we're going to use to solve the problem. Okay, so let's, uh, let's scoot this over here for a little bit, and then let's talk about the pig. So the idea is we have these pigs. Let's, let me draw a representation of the pig here. And uh, he sits on a string. That's not a very good pig, but whatever. He sits on a string, and he's going around in a circle. So let's draw the circle, something like that. Okay, And he is being acted upon by two forces. And let me, uh, let's draw the forces. Okay, so I'm going to draw the forces in kind of a reddish color. Here's the force of tension from the string. Then there's also a force pulling down from the Earth. Now, the force of the Earth pulling down, that's the gravitational force. So that's got to be uh, G big M little m. Big M is the Earth, little m is the pig, divided by the radius of the Earth squared. That's the distance between the center of the Earth and the pig. That's that guy. Now, the tension comes in two parts. There's the horizontal component of the tension, and there's the vertical component of the tension. Now, the pig's not going up and down, and so the vertical component of the tension and the vertical, this guy, the vertical downward force from the Earth, and this guy, the vertical upward force from the tension, those guys have to cancel each other out in order for this thing to work because the pig's not accelerating up and down. It's only going in a circle, in a horizontal circle. So that means that those two have to be equal. Furthermore, the net force acting on the pig is the part that's left over. That's this horizontal part. That's got to be equal to the net, the net force from Newton's second law. That's equal to mv squared over r. So let's, uh, let's take those two ideas and run with them. So next, I want to take all this and kind of scooch it out of the way a second and focus on the triangle. So let me go back to white. And I will draw the triangle, which is the string. Now, you guys measured the length of the string, L, and you measured the radius of the pig's orbit, big R. From these two guys, you can calculate the height of the triangle, which is going to be the square root of L squared minus R squared, and you can just do that numerically. At the same time, we had the force triangle, and uh, that's the force of tension, and we know two things about it. We know it has a horizontal component, and we know it has a vertical component. The vertical component, remember, was equal to the weight of the pig. The horizontal component was mv squared over r. Now, these two triangles are similar. So what that means is this height over here, which is equal to the square root of L squared minus R squared, 
divided by the radius of the pig's orbit, the ratio of, let's see if I can, the ratio of this side to this side is equal to the ratio of this force to this force. In other words, we can use the triangle and the fact that the force triangle and the geometry of the string triangle are similar to solve the problem. So let's, uh, let's scooch one more time, get this out of the way, and I'm going to write the relationship. It says that H divided by R, that's the ratio of this side to this side of the geometry triangle, is equal to the ratio of the force triangle, which is going to be little m, big M, over little r squared times g. That's the force of gravity. That's the vertical part of the tension, divided by little m, v squared, over big R. Now, big R remembers the radius of the pig's orbit. Notice that the mass of the pig cancels. The only thing you don't know in this equation is the mass of the Earth. You know the radius of the Earth, the radius of the pig's orbit, the speed of the pig's orbit, the height of the triangle, the string triangle, and that's it. Oh, and Newton's universal gravitational constant, which, of course, you can look up. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 in units of, what is that? Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And the radius of the Earth, of course, is the other thing you need. That's 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters. And we worked this all out in class, but this is just uh, to remind you how we did it. And you end up with a mass of the Earth of something like 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. All right.